Okie dokie, we're just about to go into game two. Uh, the only change I've made so far is changing the Bonds of Quicksilver for Fidelkin Sertark. This is because Bonds is pretty, particularly bad against his colour combination. Because, you know, you can make. Well, th things like uh, Glint Hawk, Bonds doesn't do anything. A uh, Glint Hawk Idol. Uh, Glint Hawk itself saves all his artifact guys. If he has any uh, Glimmer Point stags, then that's bad for me as well. Uh, I can bring in a Wing Puncture, which is probably better than a Disperse. So I'm gonna go for that, and let's let's see what's let's see what's going on this next game. Uh, another reason to bring in Sertar is he didn't seem to have any ways to get rid of my artifacts. You know, I I they always just stayed and played the whole game so. Uh, I'm going to keep this as it's got a sweet slice and twain. It's got a spell bomb and a harness. So, um, you know, I'm almost there already for my metal craftiness. Sentinels is a bit slow, but it's an artifact. Oh, horizon spell bomb from him there. That's cool. Uh, the Molder Beast. It's probably his biggest threat, other than like Strider Harness. Obviously, Strider Harness on uh, <laughs> Motor Beast is pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna play the Strider Harness just now. Uh, like if I played Blight Mamba, I wasn't gonna be blocking with it. And like a hasty Blight Mamba is quite cool. But one interesting thing about poison is even though like if you get in early with like a bite mamba or like a your one off necropeat or something, sometimes your opponent still has to prioritize that guy because if they're too busy dealing with your other good guys that deal damage, it can it can really build up. Like you, you sometimes see people if they've got they've got like a necropeat in the deck just because it's good, and then that in their otherwise metalcraft deck, but then they play like a trigon of rage. And let's face it, you can't take many hits from a, a Trigon of Rage and Infection guy, so... It's uh, it's pretty scary when you see guys uh, with Infect randomly getting bonuses, then when you don't really know if you're going to get... You, you can't really tell whether you can afford to deal with their you know, lesser guy. And they might not ever draw another poison card, but... If... if if you don't deal with it and then you kill their other guys and then they do happen to have another poison guy then you're kind of uh, <laughs> you're kind of in the crap there so oh, sorry this is a family show but I didn't say that <laughs> uh, fortunately for me here I have this slice again I could like slice up his uh, replica but Strat Scythe is pretty threatening. I don't want that to happen. Like, and all he's going to be able to kill right now is like a Strider Harness, which isn't the biggest deal. Because let's face it, the quality of my 3 drop equipment compared to his 3 drop equipment is significantly different. Unfortunately, I don't have the Revel to make, uh, you know, <laughs> to really punish him for all his uh, beasties. I could obviously again just like I could like not uh, equip uh, not play my slice or whatever to try and get him in, co in the middle of combat, but it uh, slice is a pretty expensive combat trick, uh, and you probably he is aware of it, and I don't want to be too conspicuous about just having it because then if he plays around it then. I'm just sitting there not really developing my board and then he's you know churning out some mirrors and all that sort of thing and it makes it difficult for me to like place slice and we have regeneration mana up if I need it and all that sort of thing uh, I deliberately left the the forest up there to tempt him in you know just in case I want to kill my flight spell one without letting me draw a card he didn't go for that you know surprise surprise but he might have uh, gonna get stuck in with Blight Mamba again. Yeah, he's only seen, you know, my slice and twain as sort of tricks so far. I think 
Uh, he might not expect the Dark Seal Sentinels, which I'm going to drop this turn. Uh, potentially. Well, let's see. If I make a Zuri's Brigade, then I can drop Sentinels mid combat, which seems uh, much funnier. So I'm going to do that. Um, let's see, I, I could play another Blight Mamba. Actually, yeah, yeah I'm going to do that. Like, I was going to say, I mean, playing around some Blast Angel or something, but uh, I don't care that much if my one of my Blight Mambas dead. Oh man, slice my equipment as well. Just trading the slices here. Uh, that's a shame. But at least he did it now and not in the middle of combat when, you know, I was hoping to power up my brigade to to massive sizes. Again, you might be thinking, you know, why am I playing that pre-combat? It's like, when, when there's not that really that much difference between playing something pre-combat and playing it, like, mid-battle, um, I sometimes like to deliberately play pre-combat because it makes you look worse. Even though, if I had like, uh, Untamed Might or something here, you know, I can still basically do everything I would have wanted to do with Untamed Might with this man untapped. Just random playing guys at times that are slightly off or doing things that new players would do sometimes that sometimes isn't optimal, but when you know it's not actually going to make any difference. Like, they can't actually take advantage of something you've done, or whether you can't be punished for whatever it is. I like to do that, because then they start to think, well, if you did that before, then maybe, you you know, it, it gives away things, when really it doesn't. If you only do it as a one-off, they'll start mentally associating you with doing things that new players might do. So it makes it easier for you to trap them into doing something stupid, <laughs> basically. Well, you know, my poison plan's coming along pretty well there. I was going to drop the... Um, I, I was thinking about whether to swing in with like the brigade there and the Mambas because obviously if he blocks in certain ways then I'd have to regenerate and drop the sentinels mid combat which would be pretty tricky because uh, obviously brigade is a, is a massive uh, backup plan but uh, who knows he might have like another slice in twain or something so um, this turn I'm just going to swing in with uh, these Blight Mambas. Uh, not not revert to the, the, the B plan of Brigade just yet. I mean, this, this is fine. It's I'm not really giving up a whole lot. And I need to make those guys go away sometime, right? Again, I could have played my Echoclomer, but... I'm just, I'd just like to keep things where... He, he actually has no idea what's going on in my hand. Like, I could actually have anything. Because maybe he thinks I'm just holding a bunch of land. No, let's see. So uh, if I drop Echo Clubmer this turn, he really has to chuck like everything in front of the brigade to kill it if he wishes to. Yeah, even if he has like a slice for one of my guys, so he wouldn't be able to like block everything on the brigade and, you know, block the Blight Mammas to give me the choice between the Sentinels and regeneration.
uh, Skyguard isn't the worst thing. Uh, as much as I'd like to randomly ambush one of his guys with his Sentinels, or indeed play it sort of mid-combat on his turn, the at this point I'm not really getting that much value out of doing that. Like I already have Metalcraft, and while it would be nice to counter something, it's it's just having so much damage coming at him from basically every every way. I mean, I can play this guy, but I have four artifacts out. And I don't see him being able to kill two of my artifacts to reduce Metalcraft right now. Uh, my opponent commenting on how incredibly lucky I am here. Which is enough. Like, my deck is pretty unfocused. I mean, I'm killing him in two different ways at the same time. Um, I'm not going to bother attacking with Snapsail Glider because I like having. Because that's easily traded off. Whereas Ikakoma is less easily traded off. On the other hand, his deck is basically vulnerable to having its key stuff being destroyed. I mean, let's face it, like, out of, his, out of all his cars there, his Glinthawk Idol could get past my Blight Mambas, and obviously the, the Skyguard he does play this turn. Other than that, everything else just gets halted by Bike Mamba on defense. So if I get to kill off his actually threatening things, his deck just doesn't do anything. I mean, you might have some uh, sweet chrome steeds or something, um, but that's that's not a big deal. I guess he's uh, trading off two of his guys for my Echo Glomer now. That's fine. He's being put down to nearly nothing. Uh, this guy's not at risk of sunblast, so I'm going to chuck him out. Like my deck is really good against um, metalcraft decks on account of the replicas, slices, and um, well, slice singular, and also the um, Viridian Ravel. Against a proper poison deck, my defenses are a lot worse. Against like plague stingers and everything, I think I'll have a hard time if that deck's the one in the finals. And uh, my opponent's conceded. Hurrah!